Uganda and at times East Africa. According to the president, although some of the past leaders in Africa, like Kwame Nkrumah, were talking of having the whole of African continent under one nation, which might not be possible for now, it is important to talk of political integration of some of the areas that can be integrated, like East Africa, where we have so many things in common, like the Swahili language, saying it is the reason they support East African Federation. The president also cautioned against sectarianism, saying that it is the biggest enemy hindering prosperity, strategic security, and social economic transformation. He also called upon the officers to ensure protection of water catchment areas like wetlands and swamps, because these are, the, these are critical in providing water for irrigation now that Uganda is transforming from solely relying on rainfall for farming. The lecture of opportunity was delivered to a total of 200 97 students on officer cadet course of intake 01 2019 and 04 2022 of which 42 officers are ladies who have all completed their syllabus and are now in final preparation for their commissioning uganda military academy kabamba aims at preparing and qualifying updf cadets to become combat officers capable of commanding their units during times of peace and war under various psychological physical and moral conditions. Love Uganda. Patriotism. Love Uganda. Why? Because Uganda is the one which is going to solve your, your, your prosperity problem. Principle number one, patriotism. Nate, what carry out? We find that even patriotism is not enough. Because now we have got the ex excess milk, we have got the excess sugar, excess maize, excess cement, excess uh, soap, excess metayimbwa, um, uh, the factories have come up, excess uh, tires. Oh. Even patriotism is no longer enough. So we add the second principle, Pan-Africanism. You don't know what to do, but there is East Africa. Why don't you go and reach understanding with Kenya, with Tanzania, with Rwanda, with Burundi, with South Sudan, with Congo, and they, they, we, become, we, 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 we put together our markets so that they become one market, so that somebody has got extra like the milk we have, like the, 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 the maize we have, is able to, to, to sell it. So that's why we, say, we, we now say, ah, our world is a muksosora. Muriba setani. Mugende. The ones who believe in sectarianism, you are, sat, you are certain. You are against our interests. Leave us alone. So this is the second principle of the NLM. It is based on science, not on guesswork. It is the reality. Then the third principle, ah, but in order to enjoy the patriotism of Uganda, in, enjoy, in order to enjoy the Pan-Africanism of Africa, you must undergo social economic transformation. You must become a modern person. Who is already talking about the, 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 the producing for the stomach, but also the pocket? That is already making you modern. But you can also add education, is making you more modern. You can also, if you are a traditional, you are a Karamojong running around, you will not be able to benefit from a united Uganda or a united East Africa. You must undergo social economic transformation. And finally, of course, democracy.
The Kosasi Committee has learned Uganda Airlines CEO Jennifer Bamutaraki Musime does not only lack the requisite qualifications for the position, but has failed to produce the supporting documents to the qualifications she claims to have attained. The committee has also discovered that most of the top Uganda Airlines staff, including Jennifer Bamutaraki, participated in awarding of contracts without competitive bidding that caused losses in the airlines. Officials from Uganda airlines were appearing before the committee for the third day on inquiries over irregular operations of the airlines but even you know legally speaking you are a different person we proceed as jennifer bamturaki musime in the documents acquired by the Committee on Commission, Statutory Authority and State Enterprises, Uganda Airlines appointed to the position of CEO, Jennifer Arnold Lenkai. According to the documents obtained by the Committee, Uganda Airlines Chief Executive Officer Jennifer Bamturachi Musime went through a process of change of names to Jennifer Arnold Lenkai in 2017. I did it then, now I wouldn't do it. It was something i don't i don't want to change my name anymore having attempted to change names five years ago pam Turachi told the committee to treat the information as null and void as she did not complete the legal process of change of names after having changed her mind a process she has never retracted did you retract it um i'll have to find because i have a new lawyer now. how did I'll you speak, retract it i spoke to my lawyer mm -hmm. to do the process so i'll follow up do you know if the lawyer did the process no, sir, I'm not sure, but I'll find so, out. However, this gave the committee had time on carrying out the investigation for fear of the legal implications. Before we proceed with her, we should ascertain who she is legally. Otherwise, we could be here dealing with the, someone we cannot stand tomorrow to confirm that this is the person. The, the legal process was not concluded. So you're discussing mm. when the legality is not concluded, sir. So I remain, I repeat, Jennifer Bamturaki Musime. Although in some of her documents she appears as Jennifer Bamturachi, it was further established that Bamturachi does not have all the requisite documents supporting her qualifications. Having attained a degree in social works and social administration in 1994, Bamturachi could neither produce her academic transcript nor senior full certificate. We are in 2022. True. And, and you're saying there. that Makerere mm. could not find up to now apparently they cannot, your transcript no they cannot find our uh, for that for our year there's been a lot of movement just like bam turachi most of the top officials at uganda airlines lack the required qualifications as per their job descriptions no people who are running it they are not qualified they are involved in shady deals and, and so on because we've seen other top management officials we don't have the requisite qualifications. Before being appointed CEO Uganda Airlines, Jennifer Bamturachi was the director of commercial operations at Uganda Airlines. During her time in office, Jennifer Bamturachi Musime is said to have caused several losses to the airlines, having participated in awarding contracts to a Bavata company without competitive bidding. But you said you had no connection. You've never had any connection to Abavata. Not legally, sir, because you asked if I own it. I didn't ask if you own it. What did you ask, sir? What do you remember me asking? You asked me if I had anything to do with it. In 2019, Abavata Company was awarded a contract of ushering in Uganda Airlines. Publicity and marketing for the airlines, a connection Bam Turachi participated in, as discovered by the committee. There was conflict of interest. Madam Jennifer has got a connection to a company called Abavata. They were handpicked. Why were they handpicked? Because the commercial director had an interest in that company. So she said to have caused Uganda losses of over two billion in the said bid. According to the Auditor General's report, Uganda Airlines made a loss of 102 billion in the first year of operations, 164 billion and 232 billion, respectively. The committee continues with the inquiry into its irregular operations Tuesday next week. Susan Naong and Gloria Guitabinji reporting for ABC TV. government is in the advanced stages of restoring power supply at the Simba hydropower plant which was shut recently. The Minister for Energy and Mineral Resources Ruth Nankabira while updating Parliament on the status of the Simba power dam revealed that various efforts have been secured including importing power from other fields to ensure a stable supply 
of electricity. However, Parliament found Minister Nankabira's report on his Simba power dam wanting after the interventions could not satisfy the members. On 8 August 2022, the Kayunga based in Simba hydropower plant was abruptly shut down by government, affecting several communities which remained without access to electricity. The 183 megawatts hydro plant was recently launched by President Yoweri Museveni and last week shut down after floods submerged into the powerhouse affecting the turbines. Minister for Energy and Mineral Development Ruth Nankabirwa has updated Parliament on the government interventions to contain the situation. We are optimizing the generation capacity of available power plants across the country. Nankabirwa defends the shutdown, saying it was inevitable to enable maintenance to take effect and to be completed within nine weeks. Detailed investigations are underway. And once a comprehensive root cause analysis report is finalized, my ministry will take appropriate action based on the findings and recommendations. On top of importing power from neighboring Kenya, government has managed to stabilize the electricity supply by also tapping 20 megawatts from Kakira power plant to the national grid. The plant flooded by water which ingressed into because of the work, maintenance work. Not because of the too much water, rain water. This is, please read the report. Please colleagues. After we have imported and after the shutdown, may I know the impact, how it will affect the consumer. And that's where my interest is. Because for me, I'm not an engineer. But for me, I'm a consumer. The Insimba Dam debate creates a complex desert of queries by the members of parliament on the status of electricity supply in Uganda, including the rural electrification project. The heated MPs twisted the discussion linking the Insimba situation to the challenges of electricity in the entire country. Speaker, there's no power dam which will always operate at full capacity. That's why we have the units. Even when you go to, to Bujagali, there are, there are like five units. When you stretch economy, they will tell you Ukraine. Now we are waiting, even the Minister of Energy, to tell us that even Ukraine has brought problems for electricity in Uganda. We don't wait. We shall not wait for such questions. Let the Ministry wake up and tell this Parliament the way forward. We are not going to get loans over loans loans over loans and the money is not properly utilized how do you get a loan to evacuate power and sub and, and, the, and the transmit but at the end of the day you generate the power you fail to transmit you're killing our money for somebody to say to allege that i am too mean with information is insinuating improper motives in ruth nankabiru the deputy speaker of parliament Thomas Tayewa, who chaired the session, asked the Committee on Energy and Natural Resources to pick interest in the Insimba Hydro scandal. You have your time. You're the one supervising, overseeing these sectors. So we want you to utilize your time effectively and report back. Honorable Minister, whenever you have an update to this house, please reach out to us and we shall give you space. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Um, I also in my community the Director of Human Resource Development, AIGP, Godfrey Goloba, has cautioned the newly inducted traffic officers to avoid corrupt tendencies while executing duty. Goloba was officiating at the pass out of 82 traffic officers and inspector of vehicles at Chibuli Police Training College. Passed out officers include 63 traffic officers and 19 inspectors of vehicles who have been retooled with technical modules of operation demands. <laughs> This induction course intends to equip traffic officers with special ICT knowledge and how to use installed security cameras to monitor and guide traffic flow. Well, traffic officers are not exempted from seeing dead bodies on the road. So 
we thought it wise to take them to the cemetery to see what is done there. And given the fact that they are also investigators, they have been skilled in traffic and road safety uh, duties. You have been skilled. You have the knowledge. Please go back and deliver services in a professional manner. Deliver it to the population of Uganda. While passing out these polished officers, the Director of Human Resource Development, AIGP Godfrey Golova, cautioned them against corruption. Participants or graduates, as you leave the gates of the CID training school, please take note that the population out there think that traffic, actually police, is most corrupt among government agencies. Avoid as much as possible those corrupt tendencies while executing your duty. The Directorate of Industrial Training has been pivotal in providing mechanical and technical skills to the inspector of vehicles during this training. Apply the skills you have got from this training, use it appropriately with integrity to protect people. The traffic induction course 2022 was conducted within a period of 12 weeks. Lydia Chomkama, UBC News. Uganda National Examination Board has released this year's examination timetable for primary living examinations, Uganda Certificate of Examinations, and Uganda Advanced Certificate of Examinations, which start on the 14th of October with a briefing of UCE candidates. Now, the whole exercise is estimated to cost about 50 billion Uganda shillings. While addressing the press at Media Center in Kampala, the Executive Director, Yuneb Dan Odongo, warned that UNEB will not handle any complaints of registration at examination day, advising parents to take their children to schools with UNEB registration numbers. A total of 1,280,172 candidates have been registered to sit this year's examinations in all the three levels of fine examinations, primary living, Uganda Certificate of Education and Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education. This indicates an increase in candidature of 7.7%, PLE by 1,000 and UCE by 5,000, while USCE registered a slight decrease in candidature. The number of girls being registered are more than that of the, the, the boys. But we would like to think maybe uh, because of the campaigns about the girl child not to be neglected, these campaigns have been taken seriously and parents are ensuring that the female, uh, the, the, the girl child is taken to school and kept in school until they reach this level. The board has released the timetable that indicates UCE candidates are to start writing their examinations on 17th October and end on 18th November. PLE will sit from 7th to 9th November and USCE start on 18th November and complete on 9th December. This time round, UNEB has made braille timetables to cater for the blind. They are with their fingers so they are able to read uh, using this is what we call the brain. UNEP urges school administrators and candidates to comply with the regulations on conducting the examinations, emphasizing that ignorance will not be taken as an excuse for examination malpractice. We give, we give all these actions that candidates may take. Sometimes it is inadvertent because they are not aware that this is leading to examination malpractice. Sometimes, of course, if they have planned, then they would do it despite what they have been given. But we want to protect those that may fall victim because of lack of knowledge. Because once examination malpractice is already detected, you, you cannot plead ignorance. At the moment, UNEP expects examination centers as a directive to display candidates' registers 
for confirmation of their registration as well as correctness of biodata. It has given those with complaints of a special registration until two weeks to the start of examinations to raise them, warning that no measures will be taken on examination day. If their children are in schools that do not have your NEP centers, they should worry themselves about where the children have been registered. We do not want to wait until on the day, the first day of the examination, to discover that a certain number of candidates at a particular center have not been registered. And UNEB will not take any further corrective measures for information that will reach the board on the day of the examination. In this regard, UNEB has provided a toll-free number and customer care number, plus a way on how parents and guardians can confirm their children's registration using a mobile phone. The board expects to deploy about 70,000 personnel throughout the whole exercise, which is estimated to cost about 50 billion Ugandan shillings. I'm Navka Farida and Stephen Kalisia in Kampala. Ten kabode super as you pay pola and pola for this smartphone. Make calls, update your WhatsApp status, watch YouTube, and Google anything under the sun with 2 GB worth of data every month for seven months. Simply make a small deposit of 99k and pay the balance pola and pola. You can pay in daily, weekly, or even monthly installments while you enjoy your new phone. So what are you doing today? Visit any MTN shop near you and get the MTN kabode super easy easy. Electricity is now so affordable with the Fumba Tariff set by the Electricity Regulatory Authority. With the Fumba Tariff, you can now buy up to 70 units of your car at a reduced price of 412 Uganda shillings per unit after consuming your first 80 units of the month. For more information, contact the Electricity Regulatory Authority on 0200-506-000. I remember the lockdown when the streets were empty and our lives disrupted when business is closed and our livelihoods hung in the balance hospitals were full we lost loved ones jobs and hope our children couldn't study anymore we cannot let this happen again. We should not go back. Get fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and join the millions of Ugandans who are already vaccinated. Do you need data collection services, data analysis and reporting, monitoring and evaluation systems? Then contact Mult Technologies, a professional research firm that has provided many organizations with timely research solutions for over 15 years. For more information, visit www.mt.co.ug or call us on 0704-913-399 or 0782-602-963. Visit our office in Kampala at Sayuni Complex in Tinder. Mood Technologies, your professional research firm. Meet Professor Petero. He knows something every hustler in UG is gonna love. Oh, see. You say I was just trying to uh, get the document to register for Airtel Money. Yeah. You don't need the documents. You just need to register. Yeah. 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 What's going on?
Nia. He sells things from the shop, and behind my back, he gets the money and gives it to his Bugal friends. <laughs> but just get out your money pay, so that all money comes direct to your business wallet, and only you, the owner, have access to it. Just now, star 185, start 10, start 10, hush, and now you are on. No waiting. <laughs> huh? This insanity is sweet. Give them also. I only take Airtel Money Pay. It's easy and secure. Yes, become a safer and more efficient cash free business today. Easy. No mixing your business money with your Kameza money. No, that's efficient. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. It's better to foster respect instead of fear and pain. Cause a good school equals a better life. Raising voices. Forget last season. Forget the oohs and the ohs. Forget every moment that stole the show. Because the real show is here on Go TV. It's the new season. It's action packed and it's going to be non stop football. With over 1,000 games from more than seven leagues and cup competitions plus a World Cup, make sure you get the best seat in the house this new football season. Get a Go Coder with one month of Go TV value for only 25,000 Uganda shillings and enjoy non stop football. Go TV Uganda. Love it. Welcome back from that break. Now with more news, Uganda National Curriculum carries the best foundation since it's very rigorous and demanding compared to the international curriculum, which explains why students from national curriculum excel in international examinations. Parents and teachers of Vienna College gave life to this assertion during the receipt of the May-June Cambridge in examination results, in which students had remarkable performance in economics and science. Sciences, with Uganda having the best students in sub-Saharan Africa. Take a look. The Uganda National Curriculum remains one of the best in the sub-Saharan Africa after Vienna College students performed exceedingly well in the May, June, Cambridge O-level examinations. The Ugandan curriculum is very rigorous, very demanding, and do require a lot from students. Now, when you get a student who is from the Ugandan curriculum, and you take him or her to the international curriculum, where the learning is tailored much more appropriately, and the instruction is much more modern, most students excel. In fact, I can say unequivocally that the Ugandan curriculum gives a very good foundation to a student to do international studies. Formerly a student at St. Mary's College, Kisubi, Keith Reza Hura Daniel joined Vienna College during the prolonged COVID-19 induced lockdown to benefit from the uninterrupted learning, which was not the case with the traditional schools that were under lock and key. With a mixture of both national and hybrid curriculums, Keith Reza Hura emerged the best student, scoring nine A stars in all the nine subjects he sat for. On top of all things, I'm going to have to credit the teachers because uh, back when I was at SMAC, yes, I had really nice teachers, especially my math teacher. Uh, thank you very much if you're listening to this or if you're watching this. And my English teacher, Madame Sarah, thank you very much as well. So uh, math and English are actually my best subjects. Those two made it easy back when I was at SMAC. So coming here, looking at uh, the difference in the way math and English are taught, it was easier to grasp what was being taught here because of the preparation that I had when I was at SMAC. Just like Kathy's parents, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, Agure Chibenge, attests to the fact that most parents transferred their children to international schools like Vienna College and indeed their decisions have paid off. Because the programs they offer are programs where children 
are empowered are empowered to work on their own to think creatively and not to be uh, spoon-fed they are given tasks around which they work and they create uh, they are creators of knowledge they are problem solvers so that kind of approach appealed to us Melanie Moira Ogwang topped the girls' list with a remarkable performance of eight esters. To her parents, the magic lies in the tripartite collaboration of the parents, teachers and the students. Sometimes as parents we send our children to school and we're like, let them go. And then we begin to demand for grades from the teachers. It doesn't happen that way. Like do your thing, do your thing, be yourself, love yourself, do your thing. I'm excited for all of you, I'm excited for girls. Celebrating the remarkable performance could not go without the recognition of one Jolun Saba. After all, he beat everyone in the sub-Saharan Africa after he scored the highest mark of 95% in economics. Vienna College, one of the 10 international schools in Uganda, is the largest at Cambridge enrollment and competes with other schools in 167 countries worldwide. Dokas Kimono, UBC News. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Water and Environment, Alfred Okidi, revealed that solid waste and fecal sludge management still requires a lot of investment for proper disposal in the country. This is at the project launch for strengthening solid waste and fecal sludge management capacity of the Greater Kampala Metropolitan Area at Skies Hotel in Kampala. Take a look. estimated about 90 percent of the population in Kampala relies on the use of on-site sanitation facilities which include pit latrines and septic tanks that end up being emptied directly into the environment posing both health and environmental problems it is from this backdrop that the global green growth institute minister of water and environment in the public of korea through koika launched a project for strengthening solid waste in Kampala the project looks at developing a solid waste and fecal sludge management strategy through developing waste collection centers to be used for sorting and diversion, which will be in selected municipality, respectively. Alfred Okidi, the permanent secretary, Minister of Water and Environment, noted that the intervention will go a long way to improve the health, sanitation and hygiene of communities in the greater Kampala by improving the local government sanitation systems. So if we manage the solid waste well, we are going to reduce uh, emission of the greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, therefore contributing to our nationally determined contribution. So we welcome this project and it is going to go a long way to address that. The first phase that we are going to look at is going to run, I think, up to for about close to two years, so 2024, and then subsequent. Taking this great opportunity to launch the strengthening of solid waste and fecal sludge management capacity of the Greater Kampala Metropolitan Area Project, I really hope that Korea and Uganda raise further our mutual understanding and trust and expand our cooperation and collaboration into other fields and areas. Let's keep this momentum going together. Other stakeholders say that the project represents an important step towards creating a circular economy with green growth development, thus enabling economic development, environmental sustainability and inclusiveness. Waste management in Uganda is, is a serious problem. Um, Uganda has officially one uh, landfill here in Kampala and no other landfill. So all our secondary cities, um, as well as, as Kampala, they have no formal processing of, of any form of waste and in some areas because we're talking about waste both solid as well as liquid waste so that means fecal sludge or human you know feces and um, in some parts of Uganda you, you can still see people defecating outside for example so 
again, you, you do not have to be an expert in this area to see the need for Uganda and, and Kampala to address the, the waste challenge that you're facing. The project will run from 2022 to 2023 with the objective of greenhouse gas emission reduction, green jobs creation, increase access to sustainable services, contribute to improved air quality, and enhance adaptation to climate change. Zahara Abigaba, UBC News. The Parliament of Uganda has responded to the petition presented before the Speaker Anita Among by the people of West Nile about the continuous erratic power challenges in the subregion by sending the Parliamentary Committee on Environment and Natural Resources to investigate more. Now, the group presented their petition to the Speaker Anita Among on the 4th of this month that later tantamounted to presenting the issue for discussion on the floor of Parliament. Stakeholders complained that the erratic power in West Nile sabotage economic prosperity in health, business, agriculture and education sectors. Check to the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Mong, by a group of people from West Nile on 4th of this month, the Parliamentary Committee on Environment and Natural Resources decided to engage customers of electricity in the region to understand the continuous erratic power challenges the subregion faces. People raised issues of high power tariffs, instability of the power supply by West Nile Rural Electrification Company, challenges that they think can only be addressed by connecting West Nile to national grid. According to stakeholders, erratic power in the region has affected health sector, agro-processing, education and trade cycle. Health and economic growth are mutually reinforced. And that's why West Nile is the second poorest in Uganda. The reason being that uh, we do not have access to power. Do you know where malaria bites? In Dakar. We are tired on the chair of saying West Nile is number two in poverty figures after. And yet we have a lot of potential. Because how do we move from peasantry and then uh, subsistence to pre industrial without power? This is disorientation, Apisa. However, there was a mixed reaction about power generation by Wenrico and Electromax as demand for connection to the national grid continues as absolute solution to power challenges in West Nile. For me, we do not have problem with, the, with the Wenrico, not even Electromax. We don't have problem with them. The other question I was asking, you also asked us, who supervises these people? We already see the future of West Nile is doomed. Now, after UEP failed, when the record came in, we were disappointed by the service that we were getting from when the record. Let government speed up the process of connecting this veto to the national bridge. When inquired by the committee to state reasons for erratic power in the region, management of Wenrico and Electromax said they faced challenges from dropping water levels at Nyagak 1 and other climatic factors as Electromax has challenges from suppliers of fuel for thermal generators. When we have sufficient uh, water coming in from Congo, Nyagak's capacity will be reached 3.5 megawatts. And for the time I've been here, I've not had any significant challenges with water. There was a time between 2017 and 2018 where we had the worst drought in the area. I'm, I'm actually noting that partly in the causes of uh, shortage of power, there was shortage of supply of fuel, and it should also confirm it. But it's to our dismay, we asked for the quantity of fuel you people consume here per month. The committee chaired by Dr. Emmanuel Otala resolved when Rico and Electromax to present contract agreements with the government, including agreement of handover by Uganda Electricity Board to Wenrico and agreements between Wenrico and Electromax. The committee has directed Wenrico, Electromax and Electricity Regulatory Authority to reappear before them on Monday next week in Kampala. Mr. Chairman, I'm telling you that we are working day and night to make sure there's reliable supply here. And we have statistics to prove our levels of, of reliability. What we are hearing outside is extremely different from what is on the ground. You are going to give, or rather to answer the questions that we have raised here. 
you are going to give us written responses. And on Monday, we are meeting you at the parliament. The presence of the committee showed a sense of hope for some of the legislators in the sub-region. I am very convinced and I'm very optimistic that the committee will go back, report back to the parliament for parliament to take decisions, especially on the demands of the people that the erratic power supply in the region must be addressed and it must stop. The committee also visited the two substations of Nebi and Arua, which are expected to be completed by March 2023. Wimriko, whose contract enables them to generate, distribute and sell power in West Nile, produces 3.5 megawatts from Nyagak 1 hydropower dam, as Electromax produces 8 megawatts of thermal power. I'm Nafka Farida and Joseph Odama. Well, UBC News tonight takes a very short break, but we return with business and more stories after these messages. Children are a special gift, one we must protect and nurture with care. Ensuring your child has a birth certificate opens doors for them that would otherwise be hard to access, such as immunization, school admission, or simply proving their age and belonging. Let us do our duty as parents and guardians by registering our children and getting them birth certificates. For more information, visit the NERA office closest to you or call the toll-free number 0800-211-700. This message is brought to you by NERA. As you pay Pola and Pola for this smartphone, make calls, update your WhatsApp status, watch YouTube, and Google anything under the sun with 2 GB worth of data every month for 7 months. Simply make a small deposit of 99k and pay the balance Pola and Pola. You can pay in daily, weekly, or even monthly installments while you enjoy your new phone. So what are you doing today? Visit any MTN shop near you and get the MTN Kabode Super Easy Easy. The Tales of Kasozi, brought to you by Uganda Communications Commission. Hello? Hello? This is Kasozi. How can I help you? Hey, Kasozi, my brother. Long time. We last met when we were at campus. It's been a while, but you are the person I'm looking for. Campus? Really? Hey, hey you don't remember me. Okay, so how can I help you? I'm stuck in Gulu making millions, and I need to urgently send money to my sick mother. Mm -hmm. But I can't find any mobile money agent near me. I've sent the money to your phone, as you can see the message. Eh? It might take a few minutes to come through, but I urgently need you to send the money to my mother. Let me send you her number, and you send it to her chap chap. Ah, my friend, I'm afraid your mom is going to die. What? Because I don't know you, I never went to campus, and I'm also in Gulu. So can we meet at CPS, we talk about it. Olimusiru. Stay tuned for what Kasozi does next. Tofira, refrain from unnecessary engagements with strangers over the phone. This message is powered by the Uganda Communications Commission. Honey, relax. There'll be no more worries about SMSs, phone calls, Suju data, because Daddy has got an Airtel smart plan. <laughs> There is even Airtel TV. It means no worries. <laughs> Enjoy life worry-free with Airtel Smart Plan. Shareable among five people. Use every day and pay. with electricity is now so affordable with the Fumba Tariff set by the Electricity Regulatory Authority. With the Fumba Tariff, you can now buy up to 70 units of your car at a reduced price of 412 Uganda shillings by unit after consuming your first 80 units of the month. For more information, contact the Electricity Regulatory Authority on 0200 506 000. 
Enjoy more GBs for the same price on Airtel. Shareable using to Gabonet. We have increased GBs across all your favorite parks. Now, 4 GB is at 10,000 shillings and 10.5 GB at 22,500 shillings, all valid for a week. For the heavy data users, enjoy 24 GB at 50,000 shillings and 50 GB at 100,000 shillings, all valid for a month. Dial star 175 hash or use the My Airtel app to buy these and more affordable weekly and monthly data bundles on Airtel, the smartphone network. Welcome back from that break. And now into the business scene. Sipla Uganda, a pharmaceutical company, is set to invest in the production of nine products to tackle different health issues, including cancer and sickle cells. The board has disclosed at the 2022 general annual meeting where they announced two shillings per share dividend. We have more details in this report. The demands and dynamism in the health sector has attracted Sipla Uganda Pharmaceutical Company to diversify its production without limiting to only three main health issues of HIV, hepatitis B and malaria. The greater need to have a quality product in private sector and our entry into private sector along with a greater focus on local manufacturing of products. We will introduce new products in next five years in the new therapy areas like anti-infectives, pain, CB diabetics, gastro, and anti-cancer and sickle cell. In the company's 2022 annual general meeting, it was established that all legal requirements have been met to establish a special facility to commence the production of nine new products to handle different health solutions. We have obtained all necessary approvals from the local regulators and authorities and completed the detailed engineering. And we are in the last phase of finalizing the negotiation and allotting allotment of contract to begin the construction of this facility. The pharmaceutical company has registered local sales increment in the ending year 2021-2022 of 3% and the lock sales increment by 19%. When you grow from 261 billion to 267 billion, representing a growth of 3%. When you compare our revenue and where we started from at the time of listing, our compounded annual growth in revenue has been a 7%. A two Ugandan shillings dividend per share has been announced, which is based on the gross profit margin increment of 27%. The board, upon consideration of the dividend policy, determined that the most appropriate dis, uh, distributable amount was 30% of the earnings per share, and 30% of earnings per share of uh, 6.59 was 1.9, which was rounded up at 2. two two shillings per share for the dividend. The company's profit after tax has increased to 24 billion Ugandan shillings in this year under review from the loss of 11 billion shillings over 2020-2021. This is the first time Sipla Uganda Limited to give dividends to its shareholders since it was listed on the country's stock market. Abdul Nasir Lubwama. You be sitting. But I needed to tell someone. And now into sports. The boys' schools cricket week 2022 has climaxed with Busoga College Mwiri winning their 19th title. The finals played at Ginger Senior Secondary School were cut short by rain and the only available option was to determine the winner due to the wet field was tossing the coin. Busoga College Mwiri were then declared the winners of the tournament as per tournament playing conditions. Busoga College Mwiri defeated Ginger Senior Secondary School by seven wickets while Nyakasura defeated Kololo Senior Secondary School by 37 runs to reach the final. Here are the best scenes of the day. 
Um, playing top Africa team shots and uh, this play good attitude towards the game and life so we are only improving we are going higher and higher so this is good and it will only get better uh, together with the Ghana Association we have uh, selected 40 players that we are going to follow up uh, throughout uh, their cricketing career uh, we shall have tournaments organized for them we shall have training camps organized for them we shall ensure that we follow them up that we are even sure whether or not they are training or what they are eating and in the long run organize scholarships or exchange programs where possible. So I believe in the next five or so years we shall have players who are actually ready to play for the national cricket team. <laughs> Well, with that, UBC News tonight has come to an end, but we do will leave you uh, with Molin Kenyana with tomorrow's weather forecast. I'm Laureen Masika Kazimoto, and I wish you a good night. Good evening. I think you've had a good uh, time, but we're looking at uh, the weather report for tonight. Thank you very much for watching UBC News. My name is Molin Kenyana. Now, let's start it off with the 24 hour report. Well, we're looking at mostly rainy conditions throughout last night into the early hours of today morning. We had quite some heavy showers across uh, southwestern Uganda. Barra was reporting a total of 60 millimeters. We also had uh, 56.6 across 30 and Kabale was reporting 40.2 millimeters of rainfall. Now, according to the satellite analysis, we're still looking at most of those southeasterly winds. They are moist and coming in towards the country. And because of that, we're seeing more of the wet weather activities coming in, especially over the southern sector. And that is also coupled with uh, most of the local effects across the area, especially for Lake Victoria and some of those also for the Congo air mass moving in, bringing us rains, especially to the western sector. And we could be looking at a similar situation even tomorrow. But let's take a look at the forecast. Now in the morning, we're expecting to start off with mostly isolated showers. Those will be across uh, parts of central Lake Victoria as well as the eastern side. And we could also be seeing that system in the morning towards parts of central midwestern Uganda as well as Kabale Highlands. But the rest of the country, most likely we will have a mix of clouds and sunshine. But later, as we head into the afternoon, we shall see rainy conditions across most areas within the country. And most of those will be accompanied by thunder showers. Looking at our daytime highs, we're also going to have quite a cool day, a little bit of uh, similar to what we had today. We're looking at a 26 that will be across the nation's capital, Kampala. Also chilly weather across northern Uganda. Most of that will be at 26. We're looking at quite a warm day that will be across Kasese with temperatures going up to 27 and cooler weather for Kabale Highlands at 23 degrees. Now, some of the wild cities we have for you, we're forecasting a sunny intervals that will be across Nairobi and also quite a cool day at 22 degrees centigrade. However, we're also forecasting a sunny day uh, that will be across Dubai with intervals of uh, cloudy conditions. Temperatures will be at 39, quite hot weather over there. And we're also likely to have rainy conditions again for Paris at 25 degrees centigrade. Well, that is it from the Weather Center for now. My name is Molin Kenyana. I want to wish you a good night. <music>
be preoccupied by giving credit to my server. We have said that if we are to talk to uh, Genome 70, there must be certain conditions in place. Is it true that you paid 5 million shillings to MPs that voted for Anita Mong and Tayebo? That is laughable. Why would we pay when we have nominated them as SEC? The Tauri Party has been represented in Uganda's parliament for 10 years. We only By one MP, you yourself. And my daughter, Susan. <laughs> Every Friday, 9 p.m., it's one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan Lukomwa on UBC TV.